The European Central Bank starts buying sovereign bonds on the market in the Eurozone and now the question is how will we assess the efficiency of this policy? We are joined by William de Vilde, Chief Economist Hello. of BNP Paribas. Hello William. First question, why is it that important to assess this policy of the ECB? It's very important from two perspectives. Uh, one, when the bond market will realize that it works you will see a change of direction of bond yields. They have been moving down, have reached very low levels. When it works, you would expect they would start to move up. Secondly, it is also very important because when households and uh, corporates, when they see that it works, it will give an additional boost to their confidence and will push them to spend more. Second question, how will we evaluate and assess this effectiveness? I think we have to look at a broad range of indicators. Uh, the first family of indicators is really what you would call the intermediate objectives of the ECB policy. What it means is that the ECB hopes that certain channels of transmission will see change. Concretely speaking, that there will be an impact on the euro, there will be an impact on bond yields going down, that spreads would go down and that the stock market will go up. And over the past weeks, of the past month, we've seen the Brent, the oil prices, pushing down this anticipation of inflation. What is your say about this? Yeah, well, indeed, that, that has been a dominating thematic for, for several weeks and months. Uh, what's important now since um, actually about one month and a half, what we observe is that um, oil has stabilized, it has even moved up a little bit. And what is striking is that inflation expectations, although they rebounded when the ECB announced quantitative easing, subsequently they have gradually been starting to trend down again. So it means that the market is not yet convinced that inflation will recover uh, any, any time near. From market data, let's move to economic data. What are the indicators that you will look at? You have to look at uh, what you could call soft data and then the hard data, the activity data. For the activity data, it's too early. So let's look at the soft data. These are, for instance, uh, indicator of economic sentiment as uh, produced by the European Commission. And what you see there is that the indicator has actually started to move up um, as, of, uh, as of December. Um, and what that means is that there is indeed a kind of spring in the air, so to say. Um, you could argue that there was already some anticipation that the ECB would announce quantitative easing. But on the other hand, let's not forget that there have been additional factors underpinning this better sentiment. Think of the decline of the euro and think of lower oil prices. And that really reminds us of how complex it is to disentangle the improvement in the economic data, to disentangle between the effect of QE, the effect of oil and the effect of the euro. Last question, uh, what is the conclusion so far? Well, the conclusion is that at least uh, looking at financial markets, uh, it seems to work. There seems to be a belief that this is going to pay off. Um, witnessing the significant rise um, of equity markets in Europe, far better performance than, for instance, the US, but also witnessing the compression of bond spreads um, within the Eurozone. So that's really good news. Um, the other point which is interesting and which is a bit of a difference is that the euro has stabilized and again this probably shows that um, market operators are of the view that uh, well this will actually pay off. Uh, at the end of the day we have to be patient in making our final assessment and we have to really wait for the hard data. Thank you very much William de Weyle, a topic to follow over the next month. Next, we talk about oil still and emerging markets. It's a graphic of the month with François Faure.